We've spent a lot of our time talking about the sine and cosine of the unit circle and of triangles. But there are other trig functions. There's actually six trig functions total. And while we use sine and cosine the most, we should be familiar with what other trig functions exist. And to set this up, let's start with our little circle, the unit circle that we've come to know and love. And we're going to draw a distance here. And for now, let's just call it r. Let's not make it a unit circle. And it has an x coordinate and a y coordinate. Its points are x comma y. And what we know is there are several trig functions. Each trig function has a ratio. And we're going to look at what happens to that ratio if the radius is equal to 1, if we have a unit circle. So we already know the sine of theta, given that the angle theta is in the center. The sine of theta is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So y over r. So if r is 1, the sine is just the y coordinate. We already know the cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse r. And if the radius is equal to 1 and we have a unit circle, the cosine is just equal to x. But we also have tangent that we've seen before. The tangent of theta is the opposite y over the adjacent x. And what's interesting is it doesn't matter what the radius is equal to. It could be a unit circle or not. It's going to still be y over x. What's also interesting there, and we're going to kind of refer to this more officially later in the course, if it's y over x, y is the sine of theta and x is the cosine of theta. So another way to think about tangent is to think about it as the sine over the cosine. But there are a, actually three other trig functions that we haven't worked with yet. These are the reciprocal. If I were to take 1 over the sine of theta, the reciprocal of the sine of theta we're going to call the cosecant of theta. And so it's just the opposite ratio of the sine. So sine was y over r. The cosecant is r over y, or on the unit circle, 1 over the y coordinate. So the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. We also have a reciprocal of cosine, 1 over the cosine of theta is what we call the secant of theta. Since it's the reciprocal of cosine, we'll take the cosine ratio and flip it upside down. It's r over x. Or if the radius is 1, it's 1 over x. We also have a reciprocal of tangent. The reciprocal of tangent we're going to call the cotangent of theta. And so we just flip the fraction for tangent over, and it becomes x over y, regardless if it's a unit circle or not. And similar to tangent, we said tangent is the same as sine over cosine. Cotangent's the reciprocal cosine over the sine of theta. So we have all of these reciprocal functions and other functions that we can work with and do much of the same stuff we saw in our previous video where we were identifying points on a circle. So for example, if we want to do some practice examples, let's make a table of some values. We're going to set up a big table here. We're going to start with, I'm going to come all the way to the left, some number of degrees, which we can convert to radians. We're going to draw a picture that helps us see what angle we're talking about. And then we should be able to find the sine, 
the cosine, the tangent, the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent. We should be able to find all six trig functions for any angle. Let's start with a 150 degree angle. And it might help to jump right to the drawing here. 150 degrees is 30 less than 80. So it's over here. Notice the long side's going to be root 3 over 2, and the short side's going to be 1 half. And we know in radians, we're counting 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's 5 pi over 6 radians. We also know sine is the y coordinate, which is how far up we go, which is 1 half. Cosine we know is the x coordinate. And because we're going to the left, that's the square root of 3 over 2. Those we already know. For the tangent, though, tangent we take the y divided by x. We'll do the 1 half divided by root 3 over 2 negative root 3 over 2 because it's to the left. And what's nice about this is we can see that the divide by 2's, both on the top and bottom, reduce out. And so we just have to rationalize that denominator by multiplying by root 3 over 3. And we get a negative root 3 over 3 for the tangent. The cosecant cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So if I flip the sine over, the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. For the secant, the secant is the reciprocal of the cosine. So the reciprocal of the cosine is going to be negative 2 over the square root of 3. We probably want to rationalize that denominator by multiplying by root 3 over 3. So that gives me negative 2 root 3 over 3 is the secant of 150 degrees, or 5 pi over 6. Let's actually circle these answers so they don't get lost in the work. And for the cotangent, the cotangent is going to be the reciprocal of the tangent. And notice we had two equivalent fractions. If we take the reciprocal before rationalizing, we don't have to rationalize again, which is nice, which gives us negative root 3 over 1, or just negative square root of 3. And so we're able to find all six trig ratios for 150 degrees, or 5 pi over 6. Let's try another one. Let's do, this time I'll start with the radians. Let's do 7 pi over 4. And if I draw that picture, over 4 is the quarters. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 4. It's this one in the bottom right in the fourth quadrant. It's right in the middle, so we know it's root 2 over 2 both directions. It's also 45 degrees less than 360. So if I do 360 minus 45, I'll get 315 degrees. So I know that's 315 degrees. And we should be able to fill in the sine and cosine quickly at this point. Sine is root 2 over 2. But it's negative because the sine, the y coordinate, is down. The cosine is to the right, so it's positive root 2 over 2. Go ahead and circle those, because those are final answers. And then for the tangent, we're going to divide the sine divided by the cosine, or the y divided by x. Root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2. And the y, the numerator, is negative. So when we simplify that, we know the answer is going to be negative. And what's nice is anything divided by itself is 1. For the cosecant, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So if we flip the sine over or flip the y coordinate over, we get 2 over negative square root of 2. 
And so if we rationalize the denominator by multiplying by root 2 over 2, we get 2 root 2 over 2. And the 2's divide out, so the cosecant is just the square root of 2. And of course, I'm not going to lose that negative sign that came with it. So the cosecant is negative square root of 2. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And you can see in much the same way, we'll take the reciprocal and rationalize the denominator. It's just going to be the positive square root of 2. Positive because the cosine is positive, so the reciprocal has to be positive. For the cotangent, the cotangent is going to be the reciprocal of the tangent. I don't think I drew the connecting lines. Cotangent's the reciprocal of the tangent. The reciprocal of negative 1 is just negative 1. And we've now found the six trig ratios of 7 pi over 4, or 315 degrees. Let's do one more, maybe one that's a little more interesting. Let's do 90 degrees, which we should know is pi over 2. If we draw that picture, 90 degrees or pi over 2 is straight up. And so we know the coordinates are over 0, up 1, which means the sine is the y-coordinate, 1. The cosine is the x-coordinate, 0. And the tangent is y divided by x. y is 1 divided by x is 0. And what's interesting here you'll see is 1 divided by 0 is undefined. The tangent of 90 degrees, or pi over 2, does not exist. It is undefined because we cannot divide by 0. For the cosecant, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. The reciprocal of 1 is 1. Secant, secant's the reciprocal of cosine, but the reciprocal of 0 is 1 over 0, which again, we're going to say is undefined and does not exist. So what we're finding is all six trig ratios don't necessarily always exist. The cotangent, though, does exist, because the reciprocal of 1 over 0, tangent was 1 over 0, is 0 over 1. And 0 over 1 does exist. 0 over 1 is 0. And so now we end up with our six trig ratios, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sine, secant, which is the reciprocal of cosine, and cotangent, which is the reciprocal of tangent. Those relationships are going to be very important to us, especially when we get into our next chapter. But for now, we're just going to get used to calculating the values. And we're going to do something else that we did in our previous video. But this time, we're going to extend it to all six trig ratios. If the cosine of theta is equal to 3 fifths, and theta is in quadrant, let's do 4. If we draw a picture of that, theta is in quadrant 4. And what's important there is that the x is positive, because we're going to the right, and the y is negative, because we're going down. Now, in our previous video, we learned that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta always equals 1. We know that cosine is 3 fifths, so we have sine squared of theta plus 3 fifths squared is equal to 1. Simplifying, we have sine squared of theta plus 9 over 25 equals 1. Subtracting the 9 over 25 leaves behind 16 over 25. And taking the square roots of both sides, we know that the sine of theta is 4 fifths plus or minus 4 fifths. With this information, then we should be able to fill in all the trig functions. 
Sine of theta, the sine has to be negative because it's the y coordinate. We already know the y coordinate's negative. Sine is negative 4 fifths. Cosine of theta was given to us. That's 3 fifths. Tangent of theta is y over x, or sine over cosine. Tangent's negative 4 fifths divided by 3 fifths. And the over 5s are going to reduce out. And so we're just left with the tangent being negative 4 thirds. From here, the last three trig ratios should come quickly. The cosecant of theta. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so it must be negative 5 fourths. The secant of theta is the reciprocal of the cosine, so that must be 5 thirds. And the cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of the tangent, so it must be negative 3 fourths. The six trig ratios are going to come up in many different contexts as the course develops. Yes, we use sine and cosine the most and tangent next. But the other reciprocal ratios do come up in some interesting applications as we move forward. So take a look at practicing some of these on the assignment. Let me know if you have any questions.